Hello and welcome to episode 53 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about the breadth and power and scope of cloud computing has changed the way we think about information technology and the next generation of software currently being built. The location agnosticism element of cloud has created a whole new playing field of emerging markets and developing nations. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. I mean, say that word 10 times fast, forget it. Yeah, that, that word was a bit of a pain, wasn't it? So I'm glad we're over that one now. I didn't want to get any uh, I didn't get agnostic about it at all, but uh, yeah, it wasn't a very <laughs> wasn't a very nice word to say. So look, you know, opening question then, Dave, for this week's show: um, Will this be the field leveler for the developing world? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, one of the things about cloud computing is it provides you with the ability to punch above your weight, and it really doesn't care who you are, you know, where you are, uh, as long as you have internet access and sometimes no internet access. The ability to kind of you know, get to these compute resources that you once not only could afford, but now you not even access. And so you couldn't get, you know, computers and networks and uh, other kind of hardware and software in the third world. And now we have the ability to look at these emerging markets as truly emerging markets. And so we can set up retail point of sale systems. We can set up accounting systems. We can set up marketing systems, Salesforce automation systems. So we can grow businesses in, in countries that are actually emerging. And so instead of trying to build um, markets in areas where markets are already built, you know, in the first world problem, you know, first world issues, it's a matter of you going to a place that's typically not paid attention to as much in the market who needs the help and actually taking them to the next level in terms of where they're developing, uh, you know, capabilities are going to start to occur and, and the ability to kind of get at the compute resources, which in the past was hugely problematic is now going to be something that's in, in that's in range of these countries, which is great. Yeah, look, it really is. And like we say about cloud, cloud computing doing a lot of heavy lifting for organizations and companies. I mean, in the Western world, it's almost like we take it for granted, uh, the amount of power that we have in the cloud. And, and it's certainly something where, you know, like you say, third worlds are now embracing that kind of thing. I think Africa's now got Facebook, which is, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, uh, but just just on the basis of that, you know, embracing that westernization of communication, you know, data, the moving of data and the accessibility of data in a real time environment is, uh, is is quite an amazing thing. I mean, it's uh, where do you see it going, though? What do you see the major the benefit for the third world sort of in the next five years from this day? Are they going to be on an accelerated path of everything we've learned and suddenly it's just going to be like product dumped straight in their lap? What, how do you think this journey is going to plan out? I think the biggest um, the biggest benefit is going to be companies that typically ignored the third world, you know, being able to access it as a as an area of growth in the market. And so, why retailers and you know people who uh, you know sold groceries and shoes and things like that typically left them alone because they didn't think there was much money there, and also the infrastructure was too hard to replicate in those in those countries, and the political environment may have been kind of odd, and they they didn't want to deal with that. Now those things are typically seen as um, as things they can get over pretty quickly. You can set up cloud-based accounting, point of sale systems. All they need is a computer, and they have access to all all this you know marketing information, marketing data, the ability to work um, you know very complex problems that they couldn't do before, and you know do so from a location that was you know maybe just 10 years ago. They they may not have had telecommun telecommunication, the internet, electricity, things like that. Now that's changing. And so all they need is electricity. They need the internet access. It doesn't even have to be good internet access. It can be you know mobile-based systems or 5G-based systems. And suddenly they have a foothold in the growth area of the market so they can start building businesses and building jobs and expanding those spaces and you know kind of get to the capitalist way of doing things and getting the assets they need to be successful I, it's going to take years by the way and there's going to be lots of downturns and certainly political upheavals and certain you know a lot of these countries out there are going to be constant However, we are going to see countries that were typically known as third world countries, you know, become, you know, second world and first world countries in the next, you know, uh, you know, five to 10 years. And even some of the larger growing growing companies, you know, countries out there, you see some of the Asia specific regions and 
those countries growing like crazy. And I think that's been really kind of uh, a foothold in technology enablement, really kind of not necessarily being a barrier to them anymore. We see some of the, um, you know, some of the larger, um, you know, some of the some of the more uh, depressed countries in Africa that are starting to get, uh, you know, capitalist fever and getting some basic systems in there. And some of the Chinese uh, businesses are starting to expand in those businesses and buying up businesses and expanding into those markets. And I think that's a step in the right direction. I um, mean, there's downsides of capitalism and upside of capitalism, but the ability to kind of take countries to the next level and make jobs life better, you know, better tax base so they can, uh, you know, support people better and, you know, have a more safer environment. And it's something that's also politically more stable, you know, as a step in the right direction. And I think that's where the growth is going to be in the next 20 years. It's going to be in these third world countries that, quite frankly, you know, haven't been leveraged as well as they should because a lot of the bigger businesses have been scared of them. Now the investment's going to be made in there, and there's no, and there's no barriers to entry in terms of IT uh, infrastructure that they need. It's there for them. They can leverage it for the price of an internet connection. Yeah, exactly right. And, and like you say, the, the, the cheaper this technology that the infrastructure technology has got, the more opportunity there is to you know, build those uh, and develop those um, uh, relationships with third world countries. And like you say, bring them into the Western world or bring them into the second or first uh, level of developing nations, which I think is, is really key. Um, and and so a good example, actually, the cloud computing really doesn't really have any boundaries when it comes to where people can work from. I mean, for argument's sake, you could be in Africa somewhere, as long as you've got a, a some form of internet connection, obviously electricity, uh, and maybe some fresh drinking water. Uh, you, you could log into a server somewhere like in Scotland or you know, in America or somewhere like that and be working remotely. So that's one of the beautiful things about cloud computing when it comes to, as long as they've got the right infrastructure to get online, they can pretty much be doing work from anywhere in the world, can't they? Yeah, they can. And I don't really care whom I'm working with and where they're sitting physically. I mean, it's a matter of, you know, management by objective and they're, you know, doing the work and kind of taking things to the next level. And so, you know, a marketing, a marketing company, you know, that was, you know, in the, you know, in the middle of Africa, probably something we didn't hear about, you know, in the last uh, 20 years is something that's going to be fairly common because they can set something up, typically deal with um, localized talent. They can get the infrastructure they need and get things up and running, you know, very much like India's uh, done, you know, in the last 20 years. They've been great at basically running businesses within the country and they almost got to, you know, have it down to a science and how people are outsourced to various systems. And they're not a third world country, but the thing is they exploited technology to their advantage and really kind of take things to the next level. And I think the other countries will do the same. They realize that the path to me getting a job and having a better life is me understanding how to leverage technology um, to make things a force, you know, make it a force multiplier in my ability to do a business. So I'm not, you know, selling, you know, trinkets on the side of the road. I'm building something like a marketing company or, you know, basically taking things to the next level is absolutely a step in the right direction. And I think that these governments and even the United States and, you know, some of the, um, uh, some of the United Nations to take on the cause of modernizing these countries just because, you know, we're rather give them technology to have themselves pull themselves up by the bootstrap and kind of take their economy up a level, you know, versus more foreign aid, which, um, you know, is helpful. But ultimately, we're trying to build something. We're trying to teach somebody how to fish. Uh, and that's going to be by giving them the tools to make it happen. And I think that's what we need to be doing. And this is kind of a step in the right direction. And so the ability to leverage cloud computing is kind of a force multiplier to leverage things in the business and also the ability to be agnostic in terms of where the location is, is a key differentiator. And now that we don't have to be physically, you know, someplace, it's a virtual world. You know, let's take the virtual world to the third world. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. I like that strap line, Dave. We should, we should uh, do something with that. Yeah, I like that too. I'm going to go ahead and copyright that. So that's copyright David Lent to come 2018 and 2019 just because we're so close to the new year. It's true. And you just got in there quick with that one. So, uh, you know, you, you own that now. That's out there. Well, uh, we'll put that That's right. <laughs> it's yours, sir. It's all yours. That's great. Thanks, David. And it moves us on nicely to the top three tips, actually. Uh, so if, you, if you'd like to share those, that'd be great. Yeah, first, the kind of the bummer of this is keep the political climate in mind because I've. Uh, uh, I've had personal experience in opening up markets where the um, the, po the politics of the country just kind of shut things down in terms of what we can do and 
how we could, um, you know, sell and how we could build companies in those spaces. And so, you know, whether it's, you know, European, you know, Europe, United States, Australia, you know, Asia pack, you know, there's always going to be a changing political environment in the third world. It can be a bit more volatile. Uh, and so you have to kind of keep in mind as to what those things are going to happen and, you know, make sure we're not going to, um, you know, end up in a, a banana republic and not necessarily have a business that's successful because of the government. Understand the issues around network availability um, because network's not always going to be available in all countries at the same level of uh, um, uh, reliability as it is in the in the in the developed countries. And so you kind of need to build that in and also understand that in some instances the hardware connections are going to go out a ton and you're going to have to go to the wireless connections the ability to kind of operate in what i call low bandwidth low reliable environment which a lot of people do and they do so successfully they just be able to work around some of the limitations uh, the value is longer term not shorter term so if you're looking to make profit uh, in the next couple of years, that's probably not going to happen. This is a long-term investment that leads to goodness that occurs within the countries as well as goodness that occurs within your business. And so if you have a five to 10 year objective and you're going to maintain viability in the investment and stay through the stay within the countries through thick and thin, you'll do fine. If you're going to at first sight of trouble, you know, whether it's a network outage or, you know, a coup, <laughs> Um, pull out, um, then you're not necessarily going to be, um, you know, making money from those investments. You shouldn't invest in the first place. Look, great top tips there, Dave. Thanks so much for being a part of the C-Suite show this week. I really appreciate that. It's always a pleasure. Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which I say every week, which is at David Limpicum. I'm on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. You can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, Instagram, obviously nearly forgot that as well. Uh, we've got some great blogs and in the description box below are the links for everything, all the social media, the podcasts, everything. So you can get us on Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, so subscribe to those so you don't miss out so you can hear us on the train or wherever you, wherever you are with your, your earpods in or something. Uh, but yeah, do check that out as well. Uh, and remember to like, subscribe and uh, share these videos with your friends and colleagues uh, so you don't miss out on the latest shows coming up. Click that notification bell so you'll uh, keep up to speed and, and notified as well. So that's all good. And uh, yeah, so take care and look forward to seeing you all next week. All the best.